Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is why five whys analysis does not work. If you've ever tried five whys, if you've ever tried it in a real situation, I think most people find that it simply doesn't work like it did when you, you did the exercises in a classroom situation. It feels forced, it never seems to fix the situation. Five whys doesn't work. And we're going to take a look at why this is and also link it to some other techniques. We're going to link it to statistical process control, we're going to link it to some other uh, statistical techniques along the way and some other phrases that I uh, constantly use and kind of switch in and out of. So let's talk about five whys. One of the problems with five whys, and I'm going to put it like that I think, asking why five times. Um, this is one of these great tools that have been pinched out of Toyota. Yeah, so as a business consultant I'm as guilty as anyone we hold Toyota up as being the gold standard of how to run a business. And therefore people look and read and they, they say, well, how, do, how, do, how did Toyota do it? How did Toyota do it? And the danger you have is that you cherry pick out of the Toyota systems various tools. Five Ys is one, Pull Systems is another one, um, 5S, of course, is another one. And what happens is when you just take them out and transplant them as a single tool, their effectiveness just is so diluted and people just don't find that these things work. And five ways is, a, is another great example. By the way, in Toyota, five ways works brilliantly as a problem solving approach. Five ways is the absolute appropriate thing in Toyota. So I'm not saying Toyota got this wrong. I'm saying everybody else has got it wrong because your processes are in the wrong state for five ways. So let's talk about how it works, why it works, why it doesn't work. Okay, now then, what five ways is trying to do, of course, it's trying to get to root cause. Another word for, for root cause is it's trying to look for, let's call it a single event. Okay, a single thing that you can, you can pin the fault on, you can put that right and then you've fixed the problem forevermore. The trouble is that in 99% of companies there is no single event that's causing your problem. There is often a multi-causal problem. Uh, and it goes to the heart of getting control of a process. So if I, if I put my money-making process up here for a second. So here's our process, what are we trying to do? Well, we're always trying to make money. What you have is many, many inputs to the process. So some of these might be about settings, they might be speeds, feeds, temperature. They could be about maintenance routines. So some kind of maintenance routine, lubrication routine, resetting something that's worn, etc. They could be about maintenance routines. They could be about materials coming in. Uh, could be about people, of course. 
could be about a particular training that someone needs in order to run your money-making machine. And of course, coming out of here are things that you're interested in. Often quality related, possibly speed related. You want to make it at a certain speed, possibly cost related. Okay, so there's a money making process. Now, multiple inputs. Now, providing you have multiple inputs all under control. And what under control means is fixed, not moving, not being adjusted, adjusted by operators, not being adjusted by technicians, not being adjusted by engineers, not being adjusted by anyone. So if you have all of your inputs fixed and you have a nice stable performance like this, and this happens. This will have a root cause, and therefore you can start to ask five ways. We didn't do the maintenance procedure. Why? Because we had an important order to get out the door. Why? Because we ran out of stock in the warehouse. Why? Because the quantity that was going through the system went up and we didn't notice. Why? Because we haven't got a review system to review the quantities going through the system so that we can work out the Kanban quantities. Therefore, what's the root cause? We need a system for recalculating the Kanban quantities every three months, six months, whatever. That would be the root cause. That is assignable to one thing and then Five ways works. Now what this is saying is your process is in control. When your process is in control, there will be one event. One event, in the word of SPC, it's known as common cause. Special cause, sorry on a special cause. So if you're in control, you have a special cause, you can use five ways. What I find, 99 times out of 100, almost 100 times out of 100, to be quite honest, only Toyota really knows how to get control of their business. They use great things. They use 5S properly. They use visual management properly. They always stick to rules. They will not cut across rules that have been set. Um, and because they have a process under control, then five ways is the appropriate thing because what this is about is one of these things has gone wrong. So in this case, we're saying just maintenance has gone wrong. It causes a special event. We can use five ways, no problem. However, for most people, this is not the case. For most companies, this is not the case. For most companies, what you have is the speeds are being fiddled around with, the feeds are being fiddled around with, the temperatures are being fiddled around with, because you don't have rules and you don't stick to them. You let skilled people try to fix this. Because you're, you don't have control, so now what you get is this. You get wild performance shifts in your process. So because you've got wild performance shifts in your process, you can't do your routine maintenance because your machine is constantly under pressure. There's always an urgent order to get out of the door. So this doesn't happen. You don't get time to do training because of that. You tend to bus people in um, who are you're going to pay from agencies and you're going to pay them the minimum wage you don't give them any training at all and you expect them to make good product i don't know why you'd put people like that on the most expensive place in your company right at the point of activity but anyway and of course the other thing you tend to do is you'll tend to buy the cheapest materials that aren't really up to the job yeah so typically what you've got is not control you've got something that i would call chaos 
And when you have chaos, you don't have special causes. You have common causes. What common causes mean is why have we suddenly got this problem? Because here might be the speck, yeah? And of course you're looking at the speck and you're saying, why have I gone above the speck? Well, you've gone above the speck because all of these things are moving around and on an unlucky day, they are all in the wrong place and it sends the process to the top. It sends the process to the bad place. We start making a defect or many defects. There is no root cause. And if you try and do five Ys here, there's nothing to be found because these all, these all caused it. So if you look at this and you say, what were we doing yesterday? Well, every single one of those were completely different. So when you go and say, well, what's changed from yesterday? Everything. What's the root cause then? Everything. Common cause. This is what chaos looks like. This is what control looks like. Special causes, common causes. This is what they talk about in SPC. They talk about special causes and common causes. I would talk about chaos and control. The other way to look at this is to look at it from the point of view of a distribution. Do you have a distribution, if here is your tolerances, where the distribution has shifted off center and you're producing defects here? In other words, do you want to shift the average of the results? Do you want to shift the mean, the middle? This thing here. Yeah, if you want to shift the mean, this would be control. This usually needs one dial, one root cause has made this thing move off center. You're looking to move the mean. By the way, the other, the other name for this that I would use, you're looking to change the signal. The signal is very easy to move. It can often be moved in minutes. Special cause. You're moving the signal. Okay, okay. what's this going to look like? Well, this, this is variability. This is multi-causal. Let's take a look. It's not going to look like this where you're trying to shift the signal. What you're going to get is something like this. You're going to have defects in the tails. This is all about the variability. This is about the spread. This thing is too wide. It's sitting perfectly on the target. Therefore, we don't want to move the signal. The mean is in the right place. What we've got a problem with isn't a problem with signal. This is a problem with noise. It's a problem with spread. The way we measure spread, the way we measure variability is via, not via mean, via standard deviation. What you've got to do is squeeze this thing in. Now this is not, it's not a five wise tool. How would I do this? I do this with a cause and the effect diagram. And what would I do? I would identify using the cause and effect diagram all the input variables to my process. In other words, I'd identify this picture over here and I would ask the question, is the input variable fixed? If it isn't, I'm going to fix it. If it isn't, I'm going to fix it. If it isn't, I'm going to fix it. Most of the time, 99% of the time, 99 times out of 100, when I'm asked to go and look at problems in my clients, what type of problem have they got? They've got a problem with chaos, multi-causal. We need the cause and effect diagram. We need to shift the standard deviation and control the noise. How long is it going to take? Well, it's not going to take you minutes like it does up here. This, I'm afraid, is going to take months to fix, to squeeze that thing in. You're going to use cause and effect to do that. But there is no point trying to shortcut it. This won't do it. Only Toyota and in great control so that five Ys works brilliantly. Everybody else, you are in chaos. You are nowhere near Toyota's level. 
don't use that tool it will not work so look guys understand are you in chaos or control do you want to shift the mean or do you want to shift the standard deviation do you have special causes or common causes they're all saying the same thing yeah basically do you need to use five ways or do you need to use cause and effect and what i'm saying to you is i'd even say a hundred times out of a hundred all companies only toyota are in real control they're the only company i've ever seen it everybody else is in chaos use the right tool for the right job and make more money that's what this is about if you take a hammer to a screw you can knock a, a screw in the wall with a hammer it sort of goes in but it makes a mess and just doesn't work as well as you were expecting to and that's what sort of happens with five ways pick the right tool for the job understand signal or noise chaos or control five ways versus cause and effect cause and effect is what you want improve your problem solving by getting rid of five ways